The Battle of Gettysburg is considered by most historians to be the pivotal battle of the Civil War, which turned the tide in the favor of the North and was the beginning of the end for the South. Gettysburg was a monumental four-day battle with ebbs and flows. The pivotal event within the battle at large became known as Pickett's Charge. This is the story of that epic clash within the context of the Battle of Gettysburg. Confederate General Robert E. Lee felt that a frontal assault against the center of Union forces commanded by Major General Winfield Hancock, an ultimate breach of those defenses would lead to an overall victory at Gettysburg. Although referred to as Pickett's Charge, the overall command of the offensive was assigned to Lieutenant General James Longstreet. Longstreet correctly predicted that the ultimate result of the attack would not be in the best interest of the Confederate Army. In his memoirs, Longstreet later wrote that he advised General Lee as follows, quote, General, I have been a soldier all my life. I have been with soldiers engaged in fights by couples, by squads, companies, regiments, divisions, and armies, and should know as well as anyone what soldiers can do. It is my opinion that no 15,000 men ever arrayed for battle can take that position." End quote. Under Longstreet's command were three Confederate divisions with a total of 12,500 men. Each of the three divisions was commanded by one of three generals, Major General George Pickett, Brigadier General J. Johnston Pettigrew, and Major General Isaac Trimble. Even though there were three commanders under Longstreet, the name of the encounter has become known in historical terms as Pickett's Charge. On the night of July 2, 1863, the evening prior to Pickett's charge, the Supreme Commander of the Union Forces at Gettysburg, General George G. Meade, correctly predicted that Lee would attack the center of his lines on Cemetery Ridge, commanded by General Winfield S. Hancock. Prior to the charge by the Confederates, a massive artillery barrage meant to weaken and hopefully silence the Union artillery was commenced. Those efforts were, for the most part, ineffective. At about 2 p.m., without much help from the aforementioned artillery bombardment, the infantry began their advance. Even though it is named a charge, the ground soldiers marched in line toward their enemies and did not charge until they were in close proximity of their foe. The well-entrenched Union Army, with superior numbers of men, fought with determination, and generally speaking, their leadership also performed with valor and purpose. In the end, three main factors turned the tide in the favor of the Northern troops. Number one, their superior numbers, Number two, the lack of a decisive artillery campaign by the Confederates. And number three, the vulnerability of an attacking army in open terrain versus an entrenched and concealed foe. The infantry assault lasted less than an hour, but the losses were staggering, especially for the Confederate army. Approximately 1,500 Northern troops were killed and wounded. The number of Southerners killed and wounded were considerably larger, approximately 6,500, which equates to more than 50% of those that entered the battle. As soldiers straggled back to the Confederate lines along Seminary Ridge, Lee, fearing a Union counteroffensive, tried to rally the troops, telling them the failure was all his fault. Pickett was in a state of shock and devastation 
the remainder of the day. He never forgave Lee for ordering the charge, and when Lee told him to rally his division for a possible counterattack, Pickett replied to Lee, quote, General, I have no division, end quote. A counteroffensive never developed from Meade's Army of the Potomac. Both sides were exhausted and depleted, and Meade was content to just hold the field. On July 4th, the armies observed a truce, and both sides collected their dead and wounded. Meanwhile, General Ulysses S. Grant accepted the surrender of the Confederates at the garrison along the Mississippi River at Vicksburg, Mississippi. These two concurrent Union victories are generally considered the turning point of the Civil War. History may never know Lee's thought process leading up to Pickett's charge at Gettysburg. He never published memoirs, and his after-action report was not thorough or detailed. Pickett's report was reportedly so bitter that Lee ordered it destroyed, and no copy has ever been found. Virginia newspapers praised Pickett's Virginia troops as making the most progress during the charge, and by inference criticized the troops of other states for their performance. The implications of that assessment by the newspapers in Virginia were in a large part significant in choosing the name Pickett's Charge. Pickett himself was unhappy about having his name attached to the failed charge. Some historians have questioned the veracity of the conventional wisdom that Pickett and his troops performed with great valor and courage. Pickett was perceived by some as leading from the rear. W. R. Bond wrote in 1866 that, quote, no body of troops during the last war made as much reputation on so little fighting, end quote. Pickett's charge became an iconic symbol of the eventual downfall of the Confederacy and the literary and cultural movement known as the Lost Cause. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, click on the bell for notifications of future videos, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.